All right, let's talk a little bit about stability of the new tripod here. So, where am I? Um, here in Kaikoura, or almost to Kaikoura, about an hour north of there, from this black sand beach. Um, beautiful night, hey, look at that. That's, oh uh, yeah. Um, and basically, I can say that it's just as stable as my really right stuff tripod. I mean, I've tried it in all kinds of conditions now, and um, seems totally fine. I've been doing long exposures at night, you know, up to 30 seconds. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm not buried too far in the sand here, just a little bit. And believe me, I have used flimsy tripods, and this is not flimsy at all. Uh, I've got a pretty big camera up there, I guess. Uh, not as big as a DSLR with a giant lens, but it's about 80% there. And I don't think if I put a much bigger system on there, it'd be any less stable. So yeah, seems uh, nice and solid. This is the carbon fiber model. Uh, I haven't tried the aluminum one, but I assume that's, it's got the same kind of situation, right? I think it's just heavier. So theoretically, maybe the aluminum one is e even more stable because it's heavier, but I haven't tried it. I don't know, that's just sort of a, a theory. All right, for all you camera nerds that want to know my camera settings here, I like to do this thing called HDR. And I'm at F11. All right, ISO 100. Uh, I'm at about 60 millimeters, a little bit zoomed in here. Ready to kind of see my composition. And I'm doing three brackets, uh, minus two, zero, and plus two. So here we go. Uh-oh, this... I might have to do the quick retreat here. Woo! Oh, I made it. So I want my exposures to be a little long so it smooths everything out. So now that it's retreating, let's do another one. I usually do a few different takes and then back when I get to Lightroom, I pick out the winner. Okay, continuing south. Uh, here we are at Lake Pukaki. Do not Google the word Pukaki. It's actually this color because it's all uh, glacial runoff from Mount Cook, which you can't see because it's occluded by fog way down there. Um, it's the tallest mountain in the Southern Alps on the South Island of New Zealand. Uh, beautiful drive too. But anyway, I thought I might use this as an opportunity to talk about panoramas because it's sort of a panoramic type situation, okay? Now, some people, would consider this a shortcoming of this tripod. I don't really. Um, but there is like no dedicated way just to rotate it once it's locked in place, okay? The way I do it is I don't totally lock it in place, but I keep it a little bit loose so that I can take a shot and then turn it and then turn it and then turn it and I get a little bit of overlap. You know how panoramas work. And honestly, I find that when I put stuff into Lightroom or Photoshop and then create a panorama, it's perfectly fine, right? It still creates the same kind of panorama. Um, ones that have the, the dedicated rotation do basically the same thing, right? It's still stable. Uh, so I take my shot, take my shot, take my shot. So just like that. So it's not like if you're like a panorama purist that needs to have that free rotation, then maybe it's not for you, but it's fine for me. And I would say that probably when I make landscapes like this, like this, let's say these go into my fine art series. Um, sometimes I take like, you know, 50 to 100 shots, really zoomed in, and then I layer them all together, and I've never found, like this is fine for me, right? This is fine. Okay, so I'm sitting here at Luma, Queenstown. It's sort of like a small Burning Man in New Zealand, which is awesome. And there's all kinds of art installations all over the place. So perfect for a tripod. So I've been doing mini exposures, um, usually kind of long, anywhere from five to 10 seconds. I've done a few 30 second exposures just to get the movement and see what's happening. Uh, but actually one thing that I found most useful about this is the quick release. So I could pop it off and then I could go start taking photos um, manually, like uh, just with the camera without the tripod. So it's nice to be able to jump between multiple shots. Uh, by the way, I'm using a 
Oh, there seems to be a horse nearby. This is a Leica 21mm f1.4 Simulux. This is fun. Yeah, so, like, in a way, I guess I'm saying that, like, I love the tripod because it's so easy to jump off the tripod and do quick shots and to do long exposures. You can do both. Alright, back at the ranch. Um, I thought I would show you some final things that I haven't covered so far about the tripod that I think are pretty cool. Okay, this is a minor thing. This is the bag. I'm not much of a tripod bag guy. However, this one's pretty slick because it has a little hex wrench and it goes in a little pocket, which is right there. It's handy because you never have these when you actually need them. It slides in there, just like that, easily. Um, what else? Okay, here's a little feature that I think is kind of cool. Um, I know I talked about how small it is, but it fits right in the side pocket of all the Peak Design bags, like that. I normally don't carry it with the camera on top, but you get it, it just fits in there. Um, as opposed to this one, well, I'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison. This is the really right stuff one. Okay. And there's different Peak Design bags. There's this one in the backpack, and it fits nicely in, in both of them. Um, I haven't really talked about how the legs deploy yet, but it's pretty simple. It just pops out. They just pop up in these things, these little ratchets. I don't know what they're called. And slide them out, pop them down. You're good to go. It seems to deploy just about as fast as, um, as my other one. Okay, I'm gonna deploy up the center column here. Okay, um, let me show you one other cool feature about this. So, if I were to pop off the camera here, like this. Okay, throw it on my shoulder. Um, this has a cool feature. Right down here is kind of this hidden thing. This thing slides out. And then, you can use this to mount your mobile phone. So you can use your mobile phone on the tripod, because I actually do quite a bit of filming with my mobile phone now. And of course it just packs away and slides right up in there. Now there is, this tripod has another feature which I will not show you now, but you can actually, I get that, oh there you go. You can actually take off the tripod head and you can put it underneath, so it's like inverted, and you get this thing really close to the ground, right? So you can aim the camera straight down or if you want to get really close to the ground, Oh, like that. So then, of course, like imagine this was inverted and this is really close to the ground. Then you can get super close, you know, just like right on like a water puddle or whatever. And that's something that my other, my other tripods don't do. Okay, now let's do a comparison between this one and the really right stuff one. Okay, those satisfying click sounds. Okay, let me pop on the camera right here. Bloop, lock it in. Good. Okay, so let's bring over this one. Now, as I deploy this one, I've used this one probably two or three years. It's also a great tripod. I'm not going to say anything bad about it. You guys notice I don't really say anything bad, like I'm a positive dude, you know, just positive loving dude. Um, so this one takes about just as long to deploy. Okay. It's definitely heavier, um, but I would say uh, one of the biggest differences is the cost, okay? Now, I don't know the cost off the top of my head, but I'll have Stu put it in here in post. Um, so this this is really right stuff, travel tripod. And most, if you don't know this about tripods, most of the time when you get a tripod, you get two parts. You get the legs and you get the head. So you have to buy both parts for this. So the legs are down at the bottom and the head is now down at the bottom. So that's about how much that costs, quite expensive. In fact, I think it's probably one of the most expensive ones available, but it is very high quality, made in the USA. Um, they have a great team behind it. I'm not gonna say anything bad about it at all. Uh, this one, the Kickstarter price is now down below. This is the um, fiberglass one. Oh, not fiberglass, uh, carbon fiber. And then the aluminum one is this much, and that that's the Kickstarter price. I think that after Kickstarter, it goes up a bit when it's like normal retail price. 
So in terms of stability, um, I find them both to be quite equal. Um, I've been shooting with this at night and it's totally stable. Uh, there's only, you can come in close here, Isabella. Isabella, my beautiful camera woman. Thank you, Isabella. Don't be shy. So of course this one attaches a little bit different, right? It's got this hook thing on the front and then you move it around like this. So it's basically just a slightly different system. Um, I guess like aesthetically, I like the peak design one more because it's just like, if you look at the two heads, they're just like let's bits and bobs hanging off of it. Like sometimes you get caught on things or I hit them. Or actually, if you put this on backwards, sometimes you hit your own teeth on there, you feel like a real idiot. Um, but yeah, that's just sort of an aesthetic thing, I think. But functionally, I find them both to be just equally stable. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of why I guess this is my, my tripod of choice. So in two days, I leave here, beautiful New Zealand, my beautiful family. I've got to go to the US. I'm doing 11 city art tour, I'm doing speaking. At, and so come see me. Uh, we have a, I'll put the website down below. Uh, come visit me. I'll have this bad mamma jamma with me. You can come play with it in person. Um, yeah, these are always really fun tours and I look forward to meeting you guys. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. So I'll see you guys soon. All right. Love you. Uh, go join the Kickstarter. Um, I love those Peak Design guys. I'll do anything for them. And I'll do anything for my new long black tripod. Seems kind of naughty, doesn't it?